So you want to think about what you want to do um, in, in terms of like trying Pine Hill or having it at your house? My house is fine. Okay. okay. Here, let me give a question, all right? How does book one of the Republic relate to the whole? Is, is there something in book one that he needs in order to explore two, three, and four? Five is the problems in, that come up. These are the three problems that come up. Does the ending of four right presuppose and the need for six and seven? Hmm. It's easy to see if you have six and seven that eight, nine, and ten are going to follow. See, there's an internal necessity of the Republic for this. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> let me put it this way, all set? Mm -hmm. Six and seven are the highlights. To appreciate six and seven presupposes Uh, people, readers, those present, can uh, use analogies patterns and to prepare for allegories. Right. Well, where did they get that background? Because if you just take six and seven by itself, it is, uh, presupposes an understanding of, of analogies and patterns.
two, three, and four presuppose the necessity that emerges, that follows from one. Right, so um, last time we were dealing with is there any possible unity to book one? Right? So let me suggest something um, curious. Book one starts with Sock and Glaucon at the uh, festival. Uh, or we can call it the ceremony. Festival ceremony uh, of uh, Bendis the Goddess. Okay, let's go to the end of book one. <clears throat> but to do that, first, let me just raise one curious question in the beginning of the Republic. Um, On page one, or page two in our book, Socrates, it says, um, the boy, boy caught me from behind by the cloak and said, Polymarchus calls to you to wait to wait, right? Next. And I turned around and asked him where he was. Would you mind looking at that? That's a self. Why does he, why, why does he introduce the idea of self? Right? I mean, he introduces the idea of self. Now, if he introduces the idea of self so early, is there something about we see about Socrates and Glaucon coming down to the Piraeus to watch the ceremony and festival of the goddess Bendis? What do we discover about his state of mind? Socrates' state of mind. What do we? So go back to it now, all right? Here we are, the self. How would you translate that? Let's take a look. It's rather curious, isn't it? Huh? David, what do you make of it? Um, I'm sorry, I was, I missed the question. I was yeah, just, in another direction. Yeah. In the beginning of, of the uh, dialogue, the first mention to the, of the idea of self occurs when Socrates turns around and asks, according to this translation, where he was. Uh, yeah. uh, that's not proper, is it? Well, He's not. introducing the idea of self. Yeah, he says, Kofu autos a, or uh, wherever the self might be. Curious? Yes, uh, very curious. Wait a minute. Curious? What do you want to ask him? David? Yeah, yeah. Um, wherever the self may be. 
Is he, is he looking for the self? It's a good question. Um, I think he's assuming that there is one. He's assuming the kid has one. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, what kind of a point is he making at that point? So the kid is, hey, you come back with that guy. He's going to drag him back down to the Piraeus. Something he wants to know. Where the self is. Where, where is your self? Mm -hmm. Right? But, but is that what he asks? I don't know. Is that, does he ask the boy where his self is? It's a long standing question about how we're going to translate autos. Oh, no. okay. He's asking about Paul and Marcus's self. The one who sent him. Yeah, that could be. After all, he's in the service of Holy Martin. Right. Yeah. Right. No. Oh, no. No, yeah. okay. All right, next up. Let's go to the end of book one. Right? Okay. There's a very interesting and curious conclusion. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of reflection to see what's going on. We're in that great section at 354, about eight, six to eight. Thrasymachus, feast then upon these words, O thine, O Socrates, at the festivals for the goddess of Bendis. Hey, he's going back to the opening. He's going back to the opening. Now, there's a curious word there. And uh, we might get some reflection on it. Uh, Okay, the uh, Greek word is rather curious. A S D A so so tho, right? Uh, if you, Barbara, can you look that up? I can't. There's no. I don't have a lexicon with me. We don't have Wi-Fi. Okay. <laughs> okay. What it is? The if you look it up, it's. Um, to receive something um, at or in one's hearth. Mm -hmm. it's through, right? it's, so the hearth, of course, is the central part of a home in those days, right? Mm -hmm. We use chimneys, but they didn't. Right? It's a centerpiece. Uh, what does that mean? This is something he wants. Feast then upon these words, O Socrates. Right? It's uh, to receive this unto one's hearth. Heart. Pardon? Uh, sorry? What are you doing? Oh, that's the... Okay. Good. good. Oh, it's the Wi-Fi? Just, just in general? Okay. I j yeah, sorry. Nice which uh, which word are you talking about in the English? Yeah, um, I think it's a festival. Well, that's festival. not there. Yeah. Or in my translation, it's festival. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, I'm sorry. Wait. It's at no, no, it's the it's, feast. It's uh, the feasting. Yeah. Or um, the celebrating. Uh, You're right. saying something which is placed on the hearth. So it's really not a feast. Yes, thank you. It's no, more it's of an offering. It's an offering. If that's what you're saying, it's placed on the hearth. And uh, yeah, at whose hearth would it be? I thought at the uh, temple of ben Bendis. Oh. Uh, a bima or uh, one of those stones they have. In so, if we can now problems. make sense of this remark, come on, let's yeah. play with it for a while. So. Is it like receive these words onto your hearth? 
Is that an option? Yes, but you're as wow, puzzled exactly. by it as I am. <laughs> I wish I had a translation. <laughs> but I don't. How does he, tra how does he translate mm -hmm. the, that line? Sir, he says, uh, uh, feast then upon these words of thine, O Socrates. Okay, so he's been doing feast too. And, um, the, and then at the festivities of the goddess. Of so this is... The, the, the lobe says, let this complete your entertainment. Mm. Yeah. Which well, is kind of wide open. The word is, is to receive at one's hearth. Huh. Right, huh. Really. Huh. 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 And, uh, and these words of yours, Socrates, right? At the festival and and at the, the Bendis Goddess celebration. So what is it? What 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 is the yeah. What does yeah. he mean? Huh? Like there are three speeches, three principal speeches apart from Cephalus in the first book. Huh? Adimantus, Polymarchus, Thrasymachus. Oh. Hey, those words you've used. Oh. Ah, okay. Well, it, um, in our modern way of um, talking, it's kind of like, eat your own words. It's like, um, <laughs> why don't you do what you said? It, what is that? Um, it's an idiom, right? Uh, eating, eating one's eating your, own. Yeah, eating one's words. You made your bed, now sleep in it. Yeah, like you made your bed, so sleep in it. But this is praise. This what? But this is praise. Oh. Then that doesn't really work. No, I'm well, I have to lift it, it up a bit. I have to lift it, okay. Thrasymachus is, uh, is telling Socrates to feast on it. Look, I've given you this great feast. Here it is. You should appreciate it. And he's like, oh, well, since you've become gentle and you've ceased being angry with me, uh, I guess we should continue the dinner. You're cool. You're, that's a key point is throughout the entire dialogue of book one. The idea of the logos repeats itself again and again. Each one of the speakers has their own logos. So Socrates is finding a way to deal with the problem in each of their logos and their way of reasoning and understanding. So therefore he's bringing to birth a new logos. Yeah. Thrasymachus uh, uh, says, you enjoy this banquet, but I haven't enjoyed my banquet. Um, <laughs> he, uses, he uses the same word. And so on the one level he's saying it's at the Bendis, and the other one is like, but I've had a lousy meal. You've had a banquet set before our God. I've had a lousy meal. I have not, I have not enjoyed my estias. My, I have not estia my very well. But for all of you know, it's the first person singular middle yeah. ending of the verb. Yeah. Um. Look here, in the same way, just a general, um, <clears throat> how does book four, see, two, three, and four culminate in four, two and three culminate in four, right? What is it about the conclusion in four that caps that discussion and introduces the need for a higher and more interesting level of reflection that occurs then in six and seven? Five is dealing with the problems inherent with what he has been developing, so we can hold five for a moment. So, let's take a look. All right. How about the view of justice? Shall we go there? Right. In the discussion in book four? Sure. Got it? Uh, Good. Is it 426 or 444? 444. 445, yeah, right at the end. I don't know what, you do have a quote in one, go for it. 
well, what he concludes justice is? Yeah, that's, that's somewhere in all the words. <clears throat> I better get another book. Four forty four forty three C. Okay. Need a reader? Did you say three forty three or four? Four. Four forty three C. The idea that he unpacks about the nature of justice. It's a summary section, I about a page and a half from the end of book four. Mm -hmm. I'll read it. Good, thank you. <coughs> Hold on. Um, in your text, what page is it? In the 182 in the novel, what we in the online Bible. And it's 413 in the load. Yeah. Here, can we borrow a book four? We only published up to book two. Do you want to borrow a load? Yes, please. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Which load? The right load or the left load? The right load or the left load? Very good. When you're ready. Go for it. Somebody. Okay. Accordingly then. Accordingly then, that was indeed. Yes, yes, yeah? please. Accordingly then, that was indeed, O Glaucon, a certain image of justice, and through which it was beneficial that the one. Uh, hold, uh, yeah. <clears throat> she's 17. Yeah, finish then is our dream. Yeah. She's 17, 443. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Accordingly then, we have... Accordingly then, we have <coughs> completely realized that dream which we had as soon as we began to build our city. And we conjectured that by some divine presence, it was possible for us to have lit upon a cause and an image or likeness of justice. Entirely so. Accordingly then, that was indeed, O Glaucon, a certain image of justice, and through which it was beneficial, or useful, that the one who was fitted by nature to be a shoemaker should perform the business of shoemaking properly and nothing else. But the one who was fitted by nature to be a carpenter must perform that work and in the same way for all others. So it came to light. But the truth of this, that justice indeed resembles something like this, but not in regards to the doing of the works of self externally, but as in regards to that which is internal and within in the true way, in regards to itself, and to those matters, works, that are of itself, in itself. They must not allow any genus in the soul to do the work belonging to another, nor to engage in many businesses with each other, but by truly setting its own home in order, and by self-ruling self, while adorning and becoming a friend to itself. 
by tuning the three beings of its soul in the most simple manner as three harmonic rules, the lowest and highest and middle, and all others there if they happen being between them. Um, by having bound together all these terms, and out of many, having become perfectly one, sound and in tune, thus in this way, self immediately knows what must be done, if anything is to be done, whether in the acquisition of wealth, or concerning the care of the body, or any public or private contracts. In all these cases, on the one hand, being led to see and define that action as being fair and elegant, which will preserve and bring to completion this disposition, and the knowledge which presides over this action, wisdom. But on the other hand, being led to see and define that reaction as unjust, which will always dissolve this disposition, and in turn, the opinion which presides over this reaction, ignorance. Okay. Well. <coughs> Curious? Mm -hmm. Good? Mm -hmm. Say, isn't it interesting? Let's pick up a couple of points. Right? There's this kind of disposition that is built up after the soul becomes a perfect one. What happens then? Thus, in this way, self immediately knows what must be done if anything is to be done. Hey, whether wealth, right? Concerning the care of the body, or in any public or private contracts, and in all these cases, being led to see and define that action as being fair and elegant, which will preserve and bring to completion this disposition. Hey, he's interested in bringing a certain state of mind, a disposition, isn't he? Cultivating it. Cultivating. Yeah. Cultivating. Yeah. To perfection. And, yes. Practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's spontaneous. You don't need to. Hey, no thinking. Right? It becomes obvious. Now, what does it end up with? I'm interested in that. See, it's a spontaneous action. It's after the soul is brought together the three parts into a perfect one. Uh, what does that? What maintains that disposition? Wisdom. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Notice, up to this point, he doesn't. He, he hasn't talked about wisdom. Mm. But here is the necessity for a kind of wisdom that will preserve that condition of the soul. Or it's really not the soul, it's the self. So what do you need? Wisdom. Hey. That's the transition into book six. Because in book six, <clears throat> What's the goal of book six? Mm. How we shall identify these people who have the capacity and the talent and the background to be philosophers. Right? And for philosopher for him is literal, the love of wisdom. <coughs> so therefore, six and seven is the outline for gaining that kind of wisdom which preserves that disposition of the self which allows spontaneity that's perfectly appropriate to the circumstance and doesn't need any thinking or planning or strategy, and whatever is done is most appropriate to the circumstances. Right? It's a great description of wisdom. Pardon? It's a great description of the state of wisdom. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> and a great description of, the, of ignorance, the one who wants to destroy that disposition. Yeah, oh. yeah. Like so, a jet stream. Um, any of you guys ever get into that stuff um, called Buddhism? Anybody? Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, what is jury key? Some thumos. I, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Exactly. I, I did the Korean for Method Japanese. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> Jurigi is always, uh, uh, not always, frequently confused with uh, prajna or wisdom. Right? Jurigi is that unity that occurs within oneself that allows one to act absolutely appropriate to the given circumstance without reflecting or anything else, yet every act one does is perfectly just and fair. That's Jurigi. Mm. That's, his, that's right there. By the way, it's a beautiful description of this in the Three Pillars of Zen. And I think it's under a title you can find it, The Three, three Essentials of Zen. And um, uh, for those who remember when we had Yasutani Roshi come to Costa Mesa, uh, we got him to talk about that on a Friday night. That was really interesting. How long ago was that? Wow. Barbara? That was before my time. <laughs> <laughs> like Forty-five years. On a Forty-five. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyhow, he came out with a really good one. And uh, I'll tell you a story about that later. Okay, look here. Therefore, that's the transition into six and seven. And therefore, the whole scope of wisdom, right, the necessity for it, for the disposition of the psyche, and to bring about that spontaneity central to the philosophy and central to man, is explored beautifully. And to understand these two works presupposes analogies, allegories, patterns, and that becomes the source of this work, because that's where he also uses similes, he uses metaphors and similes and establishes the conditions for analogies. So we're going to get that in two, three, and four. So therefore, that's the background for the need for understanding six and seven. Okay, I just thought I'd use What about eight, nine, and ten? You got eight, nine, and ten in a box down there, what are all they? Oh, well, the box. You mean this one? What about five? Yeah, that one. See, the greatness greatness of nine is where we get the first full need for dreams. Mm. That's where it is. And the comparative value of each of the alternate systems that he discusses in the Republic take place in ten end of 9, 10. 8 really is the background for the negative impact of 7, which is the origin of injustice. Because this whole work has two things it wants to play with, nature of justice and injustice. They become the comparative terms that are explored throughout the entire dialogue. So, let it be. What was five, though? What the three five, problems? Five is a, cl- a classic one. What are the inherent difficulties in establishing his idea of a republic? And his idea of the republic, <clears throat> in order to understand it, you have to keep that mind, uh, the development of the republic, and see in book nine, the conclusion of book nine, that the whole development of the republic has nothing to do with the republic, has nothing to do with the state, has nothing to do with creating a society. The whole thing is nothing other than a pattern laid up in the heavens for people to contemplate, since being creating this state is really a state of the soul. And that's his whole opposition, the end of the republic. So the obstacles, inherent problems, three major ones, is book five which he has to deal with before he can move into six and seven. Hmm. Well, I think the way, the way he proceeds is he was ready to go into seven, eight, eight, nine, and ten at the end of book four. Yes. 
and then Polymarchus and, and Glaucon, no, Adiamantus and, and Glaucon uh, have a discussion about, um, and then they interrupt Socrates and say, wait a minute, what about women and making households and right. making this thing work? Right. And, and that turns him back onto the education of the philosopher. Right. Not which which then proceeds through 6 and 7. Right. Right. So, um, let me put this aside. Um, <clears throat> last time I mentioned that I thought it might be a good idea to start uh, a curious program, it's going to be curious, of teaching philosophical midwifery. So anyone who's into it, drop me an email and explain to me why you want to do such a foolish thing. <laughs> you mean be taught or teach it? No, no, it's not going to, it's going to be a teaching that you have to learn. Okay. So therefore, um, it's, it's set up, I'm doing it now, by the way. I've designed several exercises. They're going to be about maybe uh, at this point seven. Uh, three are done. One is a guided exploration of the nature of a simple problem, the dynamics of it, and how to proceed in an analysis of it. Okay. The thing interesting about it is by this, by simply taking out a couple of those words and substituting for the more sophisticated and central problems, it becomes a direct exploration of philosophical midwifery in terms of seeking out a pathologos. So it has that hierarchy. Right. So what Specific is Specific and general. Right, it starts with a particular behind it as a general. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> it's, hey, it's gonna, it's, um, it, it's designed that I won't be playing a role, which is why I like it. But the burden will fall upon the people who want to play, since they're going to have to learn working with one another, guided by these instruments I've designed, or I'm going to finish designing. So, if you want to play that game, drop me an email. What's your cut? <laughs> Pierre, what's your cut? Yeah, are you licensing this and then taking a bit of profit, like like our president at his real estate? <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot the that Ryan part. Tower. <laughs> I forgot that part. <laughs> um, it's, 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 it's the same game, Noetic Society. If you want to contribute uh, any kind of donation to pursue it and help it going on, please do so. Uh, but it is not essential as a condition for playing the game. <coughs> okay. Okay? Then those people sure. would, those people would teach it to others? Mm -hmm. Those people that go through it and then practice it would then teach it to others? In what sort of setting? That, that's right. It's outlined so that you could then take your neighbor with it. Uh-huh. And then in turn you become the subject and they become the midwife. Oh, okay. And therefore, ideally, it takes a group of three, since that will allow six parameters uh, okay. exchanges, and that would be a unity. So uh, that will give that, in principle, a work, six exercises interrelating. Then they have to then talk about the ideas they've discovered, the reaction to it. Then there's a statement about philosophical midwifery, which requires them to then outline it, master it, and be prepared to talk about it in public. Right? Okay. And then there's an outline of the, the uh, <coughs> stages in which people would necessarily go through in the pursuit of this game. From that then becomes an outline of how to explore each of those uh, 15 stages. Is there an age restriction on this? <laughs> yeah. Well, what is that? You, have, you can't be older than me. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll strive to be, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll make it. Okay. How about, um, are you going to say anything about the workshop next week? The seminar next week yet? 
Is it next weekend? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't yes. know when the date was, but I'll be there. Okay, so we'll have Friday as a separate, yeah. a regular Friday, yeah. and then Saturday and Sunday. Oh, so yeah. if anybody wants to um, pay me for that, you can. And also, um, you can also um, contribute for tonight if you'd like, since we're still paying rent here. That's true. And if you don't want to do anything else, perhaps you'd like to wear a little pin on your lapel. <laughs> and it's quite expensive, this place. I mean... Like $400 a month, This is for me? This is for just tonight. Donation, thank you. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> I've been hired on to teach uh, psychological interns for philosophical midwifery. I got a job, and that's what I'm doing, and on the basis of that, I'm re replicating it for our group. Are you are you having them read that book with the orange cover? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, the orange oh yeah. Cover. That's a good book. Yeah, well, it's that, a curious one. You changed it's, the name it's, of it. it's so compact. I mean, uh, there are paragraphs that would take sitting through five or six midwife talks to see all the all the information. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it's no, very no. compact. Yeah. Hey, mark sorry. them up and let me know. Huh? Mark them up and let me yeah, know. Yeah, I can hardly read the page. I got so many markings on it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. It was fun writing it. I'll bet. Yeah. You really turn a phrase. Yeah. <laughs> True <Really> enough. Nice. <laughs> okay, uh, let's leave the group open to talk about things while I go and get a cup of coffee. My doctor, by the way, warned me. He said, Pierre, from now on, you should only have one cup of coffee at a time. <laughs> oh, at a time. No, I'm being faithful to such a Talking here. What do you got? Where they're at, not me. Yeah. So we were wondering where we were at. Oh, where were we at? Well, what did we get? What did we get from what? From the book here? I think the idea of wisdom is pretty incredible. I agree. To return to that one because it's not like a, it's not a very clear answer to what wisdom is in like a definition. It's almost like a functional idea. Mm. Like whatever keeps you in that state, we're going to call it wisdom. <laughs> so it doesn't bind it to like a definition of a virtue. Yeah, but that idea is what maintains it. Right. So it doesn't. See, it's not formulaic then. It's not prescribed. It's like you have to discover whatever it takes to keep you in that state. Quite true. Rather than like giving you a set of rules that or rest rest to follow. It's not that clear. It's not that rational in that sense. Like, I mean, David, did you say it wasn't clear after saying what he said? Did I, I, did, yeah. I miss, did I miss that? No, I was almost... Uh, Fooled by it. I got fooled by it. I, oh. <laughs> I, I was listening to his words rather than what he was saying. Oh. oh. Yeah. So for you, I've co committed some like deceiving act up, upon you. No, what I say is this is like so if if like, somebody yeah. asks me to solve a problem, right, in a math problem, I can lay out steps to solving it, and that's like a formulaic way, and it's got clear rational steps that fit into the system. Whereas this is almost like Take no. your system. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, like poo poo your your formulas to. But it is a formula. Okay, and that is. It's there. We read it. Oh, the all of it above. What was read? The putting the three is parts of the soul together and, and the harmony, and becoming a friend to oneself. Mm-hmm. See how much you're doing now? Adding to it? <laughs> See? Clever that man, isn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, remembering the text <clears throat> makes me clever, then I'll say yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're to it. David. No. So, I'm not set can't. up for rain. Okay. I can't what? do rain okay. and it's going to rain. What would, happen? <clears throat> what would happen if you read it again? Nancy said not. Oh, I'd love it again. Yeah. Now, is there a methodology? Because you don't need anything else if it's got a method. 
either so, do it or you don't do it. But, so, as in regards to that which is internal within, mm. in the true way, in regards to itself, and those matters or works that are of itself, in self, and they are... And they must not allow any genius in the soul to do the work belonging to another. So those are pretty clear. Yeah, what, how do you, what, why is that important? Why is what important? That, that line? Yeah, like... Because uh, sometimes my desiring part does my reasoning. Ah. <laughs> sometimes my spirited part does my reasoning. <laughs> so you have to keep them... See, there's no condemnation of any of the aspects of man's activity. Oh, no sin then. No, no sin. Right. Just ignorance. No. So you're not you're for not having in the high good spirit, and, for yeah. having desires. No, you're not in the game of good and evil. It's just not putting them in their right place, not having them do their own work. No. Some, something does the work of something else then. But doesn't that imply a model? Yes. Otherwise, this notion of each part doing its right thing or... Yeah. Sorry, I'm not phrasing exactly yeah. as you just read it, but yeah. it implies there's a model. There's, yes. there's a right way of doing it, and right. then there's a not right way yeah. of doing it. Quite true. And, and it should be covered in that curious paragraph. Maybe he should read from the beginning. But that's not the same as good and, of good and a bad model. Or are you drawing a similarity between those two? Just hearing what you had read, uh -huh. the notion of right implies a model. Not necessarily good, bad, evil, all that stuff. Just a model that you are comparing something against. Mm -hmm. You okay. mean like an ideal? Yeah, a model would be an ideal. That which, mm -hmm. that which from which you draw copies. Mm -hmm. You know, like like a pattern that you use to fashion something into. Might be another way of thinking of it. Nonetheless, it's a model copy relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are those three parts of the soul represented in Book One by the three speakers? Yeah, <laughs> they are. Sure. So. The first is running rampant, <laughs> freely rabble rousing. So, Shuffles. will it mark us as desire? <laughs> You're getting good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you see. The rest. <laughs> uh, those three thinkers are playing a major role. So. Okay, because they're three parts. It's quite true. Well, four, but we. Put aside the first as well. Oh, yeah. Well, Cephalus Cephal. became yeah. Polymarchus, or he was his heir to his logos. Yeah. And then Adimantus, and Thrasymachus. So Socrates put all three of those. Thrasymachus's speech contains one half of the work at the first chapter. Thrasymachus? Yeah. Uh -huh. So it, it's more fun to see the turns and twists. Oh, okay. Because it's fundamental. But it's fundamental, meaning their turns and twists are fundamental for what? For reasoning. That's why you need the first book, you see. You need a model for reasoning. And therefore, if someone comes in and says, excuse me, this reasoning business is purely arbitrary. It never gets anywhere. It's all a mask to cover up man's illusions. And in truth, you know, there is no such thing as justice. And therefore this whole idea of might is right, that's okay in the beginning, but in essence, as you see, if might is right, then there's no role of reason and rationality in the universe that makes any difference. Therefore, by showing the weakness of that position, he's asserting, therefore, the role of the logos, the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about specifically the way he responded to them, like why he chose the way he reasoned with them. 
in the oh, first book. Oh, that's interesting. What do you think? What do you see in that? I was wondering about like when he says, I have to find the exact words, but like when he says it's profitable or useful and useful, use, useful, useful and useless. Yes. And then how Socrates starts to follow what is useful yeah. and what it would take for something to be useful. Right. And he repeatedly then brings up the same examples of like boat makers, shoemakers, and he's like, well, when would it, so the just man would be useful <clears throat> in making shoes? <laughs> and so what aspect was he picking up on to explore that idea further? Philosophy. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Oh, it's very much, it's very, by the way, uh, if you are a good shoemaker, uh -huh. you know, what kinds of things would you have to know? Like, would you also uh, have to know where your materials come from? The yeah. quality of them? Be able to judge them? Even before you did anything with the, the leather. That would probably be part of it. No. If I were to be just a master in shoemaking. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You'd also have to know about feet. And feet. Yes, absolutely. So almost medical yeah. conditions. Sure. Knowledge of anatomy and mm -hmm. correct it. Yeah. So he does, I mean he does a good job of showing why the just man is useless. <laughs> in, well, in, all, he, in all of those regards. Well, well, that, well that's true. <laughs> Thank goodness. Right, yeah, yeah. That is to say it can't be used for anything other than itself. Therefore, I, it is useless for everything other than itself. I was wondering if that was tongue in cheek or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, it, it, is it not accurate? I was thinking there was something deeper meaning to the truth of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah when he says, hey, if it's possible that some people do some things better than others, <coughs> and if there's a wide variety of things a person may want to do, is it not likely that... Uh, if you're interested in checker players, would you go out and choose a uh, philosopher to play checkers with, or a good checker player? Not a checker player. Good heavens. Would that be equally true for every field? Yeah. Well, then there's no particular use to which you can put a philosopher in. <laughs> and he calls them, he sees right? them and he thinks them as useless. And things. therefore he's unemployed. <laughs> but very useful in the realm of the useless. Yeah, when you have no use for anything else, that's when see? justice is David useful. boosted the discussion up. Did you see how clever that was? No. Oh, what did you say? I just said very useful when things are useless. Oh, things like... Well, well no, no, in matters that can be considered... I, 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 I'm not going to repeat what I said, because <laughs> I can't, I can't repeat it, but it was good. <laughs> See, he did recall it, and then he says, that, uh, gee, I'm having trouble recalling it. This is like the Delphic Oracle, well, you know? Like, that is the sure, true. Well, his conclusion about justice and, and things that are useful, he said that if, if, if a man was just with money, uh, it would be to keep it safe, and that would be uh, when money's useless. Yeah. <laughs> but then he said, that would the person who's best at keeping it safe also be the best at the opposite? For instance, would a doctor who is able to put, can cure things also be able to know how to put in poisons and, and disease? And would a, uh -huh. uh, would, a, would a horse trainer know how to make a horse better, but also know how to hinder a horse? Right. So would, a, would somebody who keeps money safe also know how to best steal it? Yes. So, yeah, yeah. so if, if, if justice is keeping things safe, then it's also the person who's just for keeping things safe would also be able to make things, um, to, to, to steal things or take things away. So, so he's, the, he's the best, he's the best thief. He's, he's the he, worst he, problems in their kids. He would, he would, okay, you, you, made, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Pierre said really well the other day, he was a very good student of a very bad teacher. <laughs> That's it. Right. True. Uh, so I don't, and, and so I don't think we can go there. I, and, and I'm just kind of taking issue with that philosophy is useless. I think the argument he made about useless was when 
when Pauli Marcus was trying to say what justice was, and uh, it, 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 it turned out that if you were just, you'd also be good at stealing that which you were supposed to, to uh, regard, and therefore that couldn't be justice either. So we jumped on the word useful from Pauli Marcus saying that you would benefit your friends and harm your, enemy, yeah. harm your enemies? Uh -huh. But and but then he goes through in what thing, and then the checker player argument comes up. Okay. And if it, in contracts, what kind of contracts? Or a horse, you know, building a house, and the uh, well, and keeping money safe is where he ends up. And so when money's useless, then a just man is useful. <laughs> but I don't think he uses the same argument for philosophy. I think we made a leap there. Yeah. Well. I mean, it, we could play. We can play on that realm. That philosophy is useless. Like you did, you did a good job with that. Yeah. Okay, philosophy is useless for most practical things. But when it's not being practical, philosophy might be the most useful. <laughs> or useful for the soul. Yeah, yeah, when you're minding one's own business. Or minding your own. But but it's but justice in that turned out to be in my book an administration. In other words, an overseeing of a, like a function and a, and a process. Mm. And it wasn't, and he only called it a kind of justice. Mm. Yeah, you know, like the, uh, um, what is the only reason that they have people like Roshis and, and uh, more profound gurus of this kind and the other? They only serve one purpose, nothing else. The Roshis? Yeah. Uh, to tell you that you've made it? No. <laughs> no? All they need, they only have one art, and that is to, to be able to judge whether the person who's presenting themselves is doing it with the fullness of uh, integrity or not. That's to all. sniff out a false image? That's all. All he has to do is say, oh, you're a phony, you're not. That's all. But you have to dress it up so you use the word like integrity. <laughs> it's pretty useless. Yeah, but, it's, but, but yeah, for anything else, it's, no Roshi is any damn good as a cook. <laughs> right, get a, get a chef if you want something good, well done. Or a shoemaker. For that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's, a, that's their only virtue. <laughs> I asked this guy the other day, I, said, I have no idea how to get close to the self. And his response was, well, you don't have to. All you have to do is get rid of those things that keep you from doing that. Ah. Oh. And uh, something like that. It was very close to that. Yeah. And isn't that kind of what Hiroshi is able to do also? To, to, to take uh, away distractions uh, from... Uh, no? Ideally. You yes. think they'd be able to take, uh, remove those parts which aren't part of the practice? Uh, ideally, yes. In, okay. a, in actuality, no. You haven't met one, you say? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Isn't that what midwifery is seeking to do? Philosophical midwifery. Yeah. It's the problems, it's the blocks, it's the hang-ups that yeah, there's, you're zeroing in on. Yeah, there's no problem that is not obvious. Like, have you ever known someone... And you can say, well, guys, I can see, I can see his or her problem. Can you not? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can all do that. My, my yeah. wife is a Except for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for Apart from that, we're here. <laughs> yeah, it's obvious. All problems are obvious. Including our own, but we don't, when, know, how to, we, we don't know how to make it manifest to see it. When you can see them, I'm interested in that, they are obvious. Mm -hmm. it is, it's the seeing, it's mm -hmm. the getting to the seeing that is all the work. Once you see through it, then you can let it go and drop it. Yeah, grow yeah. through. Quite true. And that's it? the easiest part of the whole thing. Oh, that is not the, the dropping. Yeah, <laughs> it's the getting to the seeing that. Yeah, is everything. Yeah, good stuff. I don't find it to be all that easy. <laughs> I kind of tend to hold on to my problems. <laughs> pretty <laughs> loyal. Pretty loyally. Loyal. <laughs> right? I identify with it. Going to take that away? Boy, no. What am I going to do without it? What would I be without yeah, it? Yeah, who would I be, right? 
Oh, my God. Isn't I can't that, face that. Isn't that a different problem? See, that's why in that discussion, he, at that point of wisdom, it, it's all spontaneous. There's no need to keep anything. Mm. You're not protecting him. No. Clever. Yes. <laughs> How's that? What? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put my foot in that mouth this, in my mouth this time. <laughs> I mean, well, how, how's life? It's good. Mm. It's not boring. Good. <laughs> Lots of good stuff to work on. Mm. And you're going forward, tackling yes. them as they come up? Incrementally. Good. But the progress is forward. It's, it's not very fast a lot of times, but it's, it's forward. Good. Yeah. You know, as I realized something not too long ago. Ah. But I don't like to talk about it because everybody thinks I'm crazy. Not this group. Not in this group. Oh, you might be surprised. No, no. I know that everyone here is crazy. Yeah. And you can find out, that, but just ask their friends. <laughs> Go ahead. So, I don't have any. I'm getting to be of an age now where I can look back on, my, on this life oh. and it stretches out pretty far compared to yeah. like my kids, for example. And one of the things I realized that struck me is that there's no such thing as this common notion of aging. Mm. It doesn't exist. It's an illusion. Mm -hmm. All that really happens is your body slowly decays over time and it falls apart mm -hmm. and it's gone. But there's no such thing as aging. But behind it all there's something that remains. And not because I'm dealing with it on a conceptual level. Yes. I'm actually experiencing yes. it directly. Yes. Very curious. Yes. Because as I've gotten older, the reverse is happening. Right? Like Everybody tells me when I was younger, that's when you're your brightest, your sharpest, you have the most energy, you can focus the most, you can do yeah. the most things and everything. I was a complete fucking idiot when I was in my twenties. <laughs> my wife still thinks I am, but I know when I'm seeing as I'm getting older the exact opposite is happening. Yeah. So it's becoming easier to focus. Yeah. It's like I am in the process of inheriting mm -hmm. more and more of my faculties as I grow older. Mm. So if Good. that's really happening, then all, yeah. that's hap all, that, all that everybody talks about as far as getting older is that, oh, your body is just wearing out, falls apart, and it dies. Mm. The rest is just a lie. Mm. You must know that. <laughs> For some people, getting older is a thing, you know? Now they can't walk, or now they can't do this, and they're in pain, and they're all bent over. I don't feel it. I, I don't get it. It's not a thing for me. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I get more enthusiastic, and, and clearer, and, yeah, and more committed to what I think is important. The, the best way more I can, life in it. The best way I've found to describe it so far is yeah. like you have inherited more. Mm. Of, Positive, right? Yeah, well, it's sort of like you have, say you have a trust fund, right? Yeah. You have wealthy parents, and when you turn this age, you're gonna, you get an extra million dollars or ten million dollars or whatever it is. Or it's incrementally fed into you over time as you grow older. That's what it kind of feels like. Unless the trust fund is very closely tied to your mother's game, in which case it's really <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> which is what I'm doing. We got a million dollars that we cannot shake loose. Yeah. Because of that, my mother. What would you say it is that you're experiencing? You said you're experiencing that directly. Mm -hmm. What do you mean experiencing what? I'm, I'm getting smarter. I'm able to do more. I'm able to see more. I realize more. I intuit more. I mm -hmm. rationalize more. Mm -hmm. I'm faster. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I took a drug yesterday and now I feel this way. It's just I, mm -hmm. it's happened long enough that I've just seen it occur, especially over the last 10 years. Now, much of it has to do because of what I've learned here, perhaps the vast majority of it. Some good investments. Exactly, yeah. So, um, 
<laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you recommend not getting old. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take that recommendation. Um, I recommend doing the stuff that not getting senile that you can find to do from here, from from this place, from philosophical midwifery, from philosophy, basically everything that, that, mm -hmm. that you guys talk about on a regular occasion. Good stuff. It's a good way to claim your inheritance. Uh, well, it makes me think of that idea that the self is immortal, and that when you experience the nature of the self, you experience a bit of that immortality. Like Maybe you can experience the nature of the self in drops. In and then, in what? In drops. Oh. Small. <laughs> like little bite-sized chunks. Like when Shakti Pot drips down my neck or something, I'm like, ooh. Or, or it just maybe accumulates over time. <laughs> Braggart. What? Braggart. <laughs> well, if it is clear, it's always the same state when we return to it, right? Supposedly, yeah. Supposedly? Well, I have no recollection of it, but that's what I've heard. Mm. But I heard one Zen guy describe it, um, like his personal experience, like walking through a dense fog in the morning, and when you go in, you're dry, you're in your normal state, but after a while you suddenly find that you, you realize that you're drenched. Maybe that's a little bit of, of what I'm trying to describe. Mm -hmm. How would you put it in terms of like knowing the self? In what way is your experience like what you might say is knowing the self? Um, or the word self? Well, take what I say with a grain of salt, because I'm not claiming any... Always tastes better with a little salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in my own personal experience, I've gotten the most bang for the buck by being quiet and shutting up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's I find that difficult. <laughs> what's what's particularly useful for me is holding on to a question. Now, mm -hmm. admittedly, I, mm -hmm. I'm not that good at it. I kind of suck mm -hmm. at it, mm -hmm. but I'm better than most of the people I work with and deal with on a daily basis. So okay. I've gotten some mileage out of it. I'm sure. Yeah. But I've found that the best insights, the best, the best insights I've gotten have been from shutting up and trying to hold on to a question. And don't beat yourself up if you're not that good at holding on to it. Just do your best. Just be honest. What do you mean by shutting up? Because there's lots of shutting up. There's quieting and calming, and there's not not being getting involved in polemic and bullshit. Um, what works for me is an active form of shutting up. That's perhaps the best way to describe it is listening, but not necessarily having an object you're listening to. Like. When you think you hear something, and it's like you freeze and you stop and you arrest all the other stuff you're thinking about at that moment because it's something like vitally important, like maybe like there's a car crash or there's some animal that's hunting you or something. It's something that alarms you or mm -hmm. just instantly draws your attention. And then you shut the hell up, but you're like straining to hear as best you can, mm -hmm. right? The moment right before you realize you're doing it. That's what I mean by like an active form of shutting up and listening. I've gotten some mileage out of that. Reminds me of King King used to always quote that philosopher who said, strain and see. No. It, was, it also had to do with something on the toilet. But, no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, that's King King's humor. No. But it was a, a Greek philosopher said that. But that sounds like kind of what you're doing. It's like no. the moment before you're aware of listening at your highest level. When you're doing it, but you're not abstracting it by thinking that you're doing it, mm -hmm. right? You don't have this abstraction of an awareness that you're doing it in the normal mundane way. Mm -hmm. You're not taking yourself out of it. You're in it. Yeah, you're just, you're fully aware of this. You're, you're fully, fully aware in this state. You're not trying to be aware of the state. Like, am I listening now? No. Am I really listening now? No. I really you're not playing that game. And what, what did you say that you got out of this 
pull of the practice um, um, when you said bang for your buck? What do I mean by it? Yeah. Uh, no, what did you say that you got out of it? Oh, um, insights to questions, um, like problems in my life. Like, I've gotten a, a tremendous amount of benefit through philosophical midwifery, but I don't have a, I don't have a lot of um, I don't take enough opportunity because of other obligations to come here as much as I would like or to spend time mm -hmm. with you guys. So I kind of have to figure shit out on my own. So without having somebody to practice mm -hmm. philosophical midwife with, I just found the next best thing, which is to do it yourself. Shut up. And Hold on to a problem, to a question, okay. and say, what the hell is this? Why, 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 why? Right. And then try to strain and listen as hard sure. as you can. Sure. So I've gotten some mileage out of that. Hold, and, hold on to the question until it bursts. Right. And then gives you another one. Right. So that's, that's really what, what I'm talking about. And the, the payout for that is insight. Have you um, tried doing that with uh, Xenophanes' question? Uh, Xenophanes' question. Which one is it? It's, it's not what after all is the nature of the one in and of itself. It's not that one. No, it's um, what is it that sees, hears, and Oh, hears. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I spent a lot of time with that. I gave up on it. It's too hard. <laughs> no. No, because you couldn't find it. Because there was nothing there. There was nothing there. Or rather, <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no language to describe what is and is not there. So why bother? I got much, much more important questions like, why do I have problems with my mom? Right? In what ways does my father mess things up? Because I'm seeing some connections and patterns right, mm -hmm. throughout this part of my life. Stuff like that, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's where the money is. <laughs> did, did you... Cleaning up the attic. Yeah. Did you experience what Pierre calls uh, the bursting of the question? Because that's very interesting Why? language. Why? Uh, because it's like... I mean, it, it, it sounds like a very very specific kind of experience. It's quite true. So I, I want to hear more about it. What is about the answer you, you find lacking that you have to ask more about it? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's like when you when you hear a good joke, do you have to explain it? No, you don't. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's obvious. Right. <laughs> but you're. I think you're asking. <clears throat> um, is it possible to describe the kind of experience that might be attending such a bursting of a question? Yeah. By the way, I do think you have an answer to that. Why don't you tell us what you think it is? <laughs> Come on. Um, I think it's very, very um, clear. Clear. And um, unobstructed kind of uh, like a a release of tension. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel kind of stupid answering my own question. <laughs> wow, that's only because you're honest. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, How can you be stupid yeah. when you're smart enough to answer your own question? Yeah, see. Or I feel ironic. Ironic. Okay, that's better. Go ahead. These people are all weird, except you and I. No? I appreciate growing older because of all my life's mm. experience. 
<laughs> and I don't put up with a lot of crap that I would have put up with when I was 20, 30, 40, or 50. I won't do it anymore because I know this is where I want to be. Good. Done. Um, yeah. Nice. And there's room. Yes. So how do you crack open this thing? Sure. What you guys were talking about? Uh, how do you, you're getting to a moment of clarity? And what That's what it looks like, so we have to be careful and louse it up so we can go back and have fun. <laughs> I, I don't agree, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After all, all you, all you need to know is why you're here. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, apart from that, right? If there's nothing else is worth it. I've been searching for that for a while. Ah, here's the... Yeah, but in the meantime, you can't deny that you're here. Jeff is our chief thinker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not the only one in this Oh, no, 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 no. It's, others may share the, the honor, but you have a good reflective capacity, always. And he's put some time into it. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been someplace. Mm-hmm. You might be willing to share some of that journey. Hmm. Well, so Elder asked, uh, you know, I see, yeah, I, I've sat with that question of Xenophanes before. And I was talking to Pierre, it was a couple of years ago, and I was actually disappointed. I wanted to have a, a brilliant light of being experience. And Pierre's like, yeah, you did that a long time ago. You're actually quite past that. And I was like, <laughs> that was pretty awesome. I wanted to do it some more. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> it's not where you're at anymore. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I got over. It took me a day or two, and I got over it and said, "Really, I really don't know what I'm looking for at this point." But um, you're lucky. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like we're still talking about justice. Uh, go ahead. No, just a thought. No. Yeah. Talking about all these different experiences, it just feels like we're still talking about no. justice. Yes. And you're all with that conclusion to Book Four and the Republic. And what will maintain that state? That has been the issue. Yeah. Well, he said it was an administration. And what it takes is a, a, a forthright commitment to it. Well, that's pretty profound. I don't think so. Good. Sounds like hard work. But well, if it's hard work, it's not a good thing to do it. But, but on the <laughs> other hand, yeah. I think you really do have to be kind of a warrior and, uh, and, and cut through the bullshit and, and want mm. to go to that place more than any other place in this multifarious and mm. phantasmagoric mm. world of ours. Mm. That's protecting. Yeah. yeah. In that sense. Like fighting for justice. Uh, to, to be, yeah, to be a guardian, yeah. yeah. Proper guardian. Well, that's one of the three parts. Mm -hmm. The of higher, middle, and lower. So would that mean that the uh, Canadian housewife got into justice? Mm-hmm. Well, she starts to, instead of going through the roller coaster, starts to maintain. Yeah. At least to a pretty decent degree. That's right. That's a key moment when the ups and downs cease. Right. That's because in that moment of seeing the brilliant light of being, you come to know something true about yourself. Because in that moment of the brilliant light of being, you come to see something true about yourself that doesn't come and go, that is always present, like the nature of your mind and the nature of your power to see and that your mind turns itself back upon itself to bring itself to wisdom and, and insight. Well, the uh, brilliant mind of being comes and goes. Oh, yeah. 
Well, of it, the appears, therapy, or? it appears like it comes and goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our participation in it comes and goes. <laughs> but it may be and stay what it is. Totally. But the, the, the uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, you're left with the riddle, which is, uh, if you once dare to think that's the ultimate experience, someone might come along and ask, say, uh, is it possible that there's a, a cause for everything? You would say. If something exists, there's a cause for it. Well, is there a, equally a cause for any experience, as well as anything? Yeah, I don't always know them, but yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, there are. So if someone were to say the brilliant light of being is an ultimate experience, we'd say, excuse me, must there not be a cause to that? Right. Well, I was thinking of these two gentlemen here, and they said, he's like, well, I'm more interested in what's going on with my mom right now. <laughs> and I'm more interested about what I've learned from my dad. And he's like, you know, Pierre told me, you know, you're past that, you're on to some other question now. Like, uh, once they've had that experience, it's not necessarily, the question isn't like, well, how can I get back into that experience? It's now what, what I'm going to do as a result of that experience. I think it's all justice. Oh. You said that again. <laughs> and like with a period at the end though, I want like a comma. Like, oh. Well, what's, <laughs> how would you connect all these because, things? <laughs> how would you connect all these things that you just said? Mm -hmm. Like I'm interested in the problems with my personal backstory. You're at a point where you've had some experiences, you'd like to have more, but you're dealing with other things too, mm -hmm. right? We're all kind of like that together. I don't know if I'm looking for an experience. You're looking for what do you call it an experience? An answer to a question or an understanding or an insight? I didn't get an answer either. Right. Oh. Yeah. I like your answer that there is no answer. So I'm like yeah. Mm. You know, it's I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't think it's an experience though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking for experience either doesn't really help me very much. What about wisdom? That, is that an experience? It's, it's, uh, no. It's a pretty good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just you'll put a name on it. You'll consider it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good seeing you. Wonderful to see you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. What did you come with? <laughs> That's a good breathe. <laughs> nice, um, shift of state of mind. Walking here. Good. Good. She's a curious girl. Known her for a while. How long have I known her? A while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure actually. <laughs> How far back do we go? <laughs> well, shall we? Shall we? Call it a night. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Pierre. Pleasure, pleasure. I don't think anybody's on here.